Jeg talte tidligere på aften med Phil Zuckerman og spurgte ham, hvad der får en amerikaner som ham til at interessere sig for religionens rolle i Danmark og Sverige. Yes, uh, about four or five years ago, I was asked by Cambridge University Press to write a chapter for a book about how many atheists are there in the world. And they wanted to know by country. And so I spent about six months looking through every survey I could find, international surveys, national surveys, asking questions about what people believed or didn't believe, and I made a list. And when I was done, I saw that Denmark and Sweden seemed to be the most secular countries in the world. Now, this was measured by not only church attendance, they have the lowest rates of church attendance, but also belief in God, belief in the Bible, belief in life after death, Jesus, and all that. Now, I was shocked and stunned because My knowledge of Denmark and Sweden is that these are very good, strong, healthy, secure, prosperous so, countries. So you were almost like an anthropologist to ac accidentally stumble upon two lost tribes in the Amazon. <laughs> well, in a way, I, I would. You could say that. I mean, I've always greatly respected Scandinavia, and so I, I was always taught that uh, Scandinavian uh, countries have done such a great job of creating healthy, equal, fair societies. So I wanted my fellow Americans to see, aha, here are countries where the religion is not so strong, uh, worship of God is not so important, and yet they're very healthy societies. So in a way, when I, I, I wanted to come here and really dig deeply uh, beneath these numbers from these surveys and see what's it really like here. But Sukuma, why do you think that economic prosperity, social progress, etc., which you find in Scandinavia, has got to do with the uh, lack of Uh, religion, because I mean, your own country, America, yeah. God's own country, if you like, yeah. is one of the most uh, affluent nations on earth, mm. and their religion is strong. Mm. There's a lot there I have to jump in on. Okay, <laughs> so first of all, uh, I don't think that the Scandinavian nations are so good because they are secular. I would never make that argument. I simply had to counter, in the United States, the belief is you must have God in order to have a good society, and I simply wanted to say, well, no, that's not necessarily true. You can have a good, strong, prosperous society without much religion. So I'm not saying that the atheism or the secularity causes strong economies or whatever. They just, it doesn't seem to be a hindrance. And Americans need to know that. Because Americans think, oh, if you abandon Jesus and you abandon God, everything will fall apart. And I simply wanted Americans to know that that's not true. And the second thing you said is that Americans are so religious and yet they're the wealthiest country. Now, of course, as you know, the wealth in the United States is not evenly shared. We have an extreme, huge uh, uh, gap between rich and poor. So in a way, uh, uh, the average Dane or Swede does much better uh, than the average American. But maybe the social uh, inequality in your country doesn't owe to the fact that religion is strong in the country, but perhaps more to the interpretation of religion. In other words, you have good religion and bad religion. Oh, I would agree with that, definitely. I, I definitely, in fact, that was one of the greatest discoveries for me in living in Denmark and talking to Danes and Swedes was their interpretation of Christianity is very different than most Americans' interpretation of Christianity. And, and I, I, I would definitely agree because uh, in the United States, to be a Christian means Uh, you, you believe in, you know, Jesus is your personal savior and the Bible is the word of God and all these things. And that's what it means to be a Christian. And at the same time, you can own 10 guns and it, it doesn't matter. And you support the war in Iraq and you support the death penalty and you don't give money to hospitals or poor people because it's their fault. But you love Jesus. And that's being a Christian in America. In Denmark, I found a very different Christian, which was... You take care of each other, and that's what it means to be a Christian in Denmark. I'm quite certain, although I'm not a Christian myself, that okay. Christian people here in this country would say, look, one of the things you didn't understand, Mr. Zuckerman, is that people in Denmark are not passionate about their religion, mm. unlike in America or mm. in many other places mm. in the world, so that what you see in terms of religion is not what you get. In Denmark, there is some sort of innerly kite mm. connected to the uh, Protestant or Lutheran faith. Yes. Absolutely, you're right, that in the United States, uh, people are much more open. They, their religion is on their bumper stickers, their religion is in their jewelry, and they talk about God a lot, and it's true. Uh, for Dan I did find that for Danes and Swedes, uh, uh, religion is a personal matter and a private matter. However, what I would say to that is, I didn't just live here. I sat down with 150 people and had in-depth conversations with them face-to-face uh, -face for over an hour, sometimes two hours, sometimes three hours, and I really tried to dig deep. And, and I have to say that 
um, you know, there was this bishop, Linhart, I think is his name, and he said, ah, oh, the Danes... Den Linhart, yeah. Yes, they said, uh, Danes with their religion are like a lottery ticket. And if you just scratch, you don't see much on the surface, but if you scratch, you will find it's deeply in there. Well, I scratched and I scratched and I scratched, and I, I did not find much in there. And I don't think it was because people were simply uh, shy or not wanting to talk about it. I mean, I really found that, yes, that happened sometimes, but most of the time, I was really trying to get at their hearts and their souls about this question of religion, and I found that most of the time they're simply quite uninterested about religion and they're quite secular. Mm. But why do you think such a large, large number of those people you're talking to and a large number of the Danish population mm. are still member of the National Church? Yes. 83% 80, I think it is. Yes, that's, that's correct. That's a paradox, isn't it? Yes, that's a very, very important uh, question. What I found was that Danes were very much cultural Christians. And I think many people in many countries are that way as well. I think you find cultural Catholics. Certainly in America, most Jews are cultural Jews. Um, what I found was that for Danes, uh, uh, the church is part of their culture, their heritage, their tradition. They like uh, certain rituals, of course, as you know, the uh, baptism and confirmation and marriage. I mean, they like to have the tradition of the church. They like to have the beauty of the church. And they like to celebrate certain holidays because it's part of their history, it's part of who they are, and you have a nice goose at Christmas. What they don't care about so much is the supernatural beliefs about Jesus' blood saving us from sin. So I think actually it's not too strange for this. I mean, I don't yeah. think it's that weird. I think it's possible that people can love religion and love the traditions and not necessarily believe in the, in the details. But do you think that, given the larger influx of, of Muslims or influence of yeah. Islam in Europe that mm. that God and religion mm. will gain a larger say in Denmark? To me this is the most important question, the most interesting question and I hope to come back again and again to see what happens and I think two possibilities. I think the presence of so many Muslim immigrants who are strong in their religious faith will have one of two possibilities. It may cause Danes to think, oh my goodness, you know, we need to be more Christian and we need to look to our own religion and our own God and our own Savior and, and it may mean that Danes will become more religious over time. The other possibility, however, is that Danes will see the Muslim immigrant uh, religion and think we need to defend our democratic values, our secular values, our rational values, uh, science, democracy, and it may make them even more uh, uh, secure in that. And I think with the Muslim cartoon controversy, you saw more of the defense of secular democracy and less uh, a love of Jesus. So if I had to predict, I think Danes will, def will become even more strong in their secularity. But you know, religion is a funny thing, and it's a powerful thing, and it's quite possible in 20 or 30 years, uh, Danes will be running around singing hallelujah to God, so I can't say. Ultimately, only God knows. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you very much for the <laughs>